Good day my scholars and you are welcome to my school YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In today's video, we are going to be learning about simple machines. So sit down, relax, do not go anywhere and I'll be right back. You are welcome back to my school youtube channel in today's video we are going to be discussing about simple machines so before we dive into the lesson properly let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson at the end of this lesson students should be able to a define a machine and list at least five simple machines b define i force ratio ii velocity ratio iii efficiency and write down mathematical relationship between them C. Relate I, 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 and I, I, I in B above. D. Calculate force ratio, velocity ratio, and efficiency for a simple machine. E. Draw I, an inclined plane, I, I, wheel and azo, I, 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 a lever, I, V, a pulley, V, a screw, V, I, a hydraulic press, and where possible, do this to achieve a specific velocity ratio so let's move to the next slide let's begin with our lesson so in physics when we talk about machine we are not necessarily referring to a complex piece of mechanism okay we are simply referring to a device or tool used to do work so in physics we define machine okay as a tool or device that allows a force applied to one end to overcome a resisting force at another point Okay, so in most cases, but not all cases, the machine enables a load or resistance to be overcome by a small force. Okay, so a simple machine is a machine in its simplest form. So some examples of common machines are scissors, drill brace, the shovel, the pulley at the top of a flag post, the steering wheel of an automobile, and the wheelchair ramp. Okay, those are some examples of simple machines. So let's move to the next slide. So there are some terms, okay, normally used when describing or when talking about machine in physics. Okay, so the first term is mechanical advantage. Okay, so another word for mechanical advantage is force ratio. So don't be confused. So mechanical advantage of a machine is defined as the ratio of the load to the effort. Mechanical advantage or force ratio is defined as the ratio of the load to the effort. So the load here actually refers to the resisting force. Okay, why the effort here is the applied force. Okay, or the force that is applied to overcome the resisting force, which is the load. So mathematically, mechanical advantage is equal to load over effort. Okay, it's usually a ratio. Okay, so note that the mechanical advantage of a machine is influenced by friction in parts. Okay, friction affects the mechanical advantage of a machine and also the quality of construction of a machine also affects the mechanical advantage of a machine. Okay, so the next term is called velocity ratio. Okay, so the term velocity ratio is defined as the ratio of the distance moved by the effort to the distance moved by the load. So velocity ratio is equal to x over y. Okay, where s here represents the distance moved by effort and y represents the distance moved by load. So let's move to the next slide and discuss about the other term called efficiency. Okay, so but before we talk about that, uh, you should note that the velocity ratio of a machine depends on the uh, geometry of the machine. So geometry here actually represents the shape of the machine. Okay, so let's talk about the um, other term used when describing machine in physics, which is efficiency. Okay, and efficiency is represented with this symbol, it's denoted by this symbol, and this symbol is known as eta. Okay, it is spelled E-T-A, eta. So what is the meaning of efficiency? So efficiency is just the ratio of useful work done by the machine to the total work put into the machine. Okay, the ratio of the useful work done by the machine to the total work put into the machine is what is known as efficiency of a machine. Okay, so it is usually expressed as a percentage and is defined as follows. So efficiency is equal to work output all over work input times 100%. But remember that 
work is defined as mathematically work is defined as force times distance so work output is equals to load times distance moved by load meaning the efficiency can also be gotten by using this formula load times distance moved by load over effort times distance moved by effort okay so if area represent our load and y represent distance moved by load and E represents represent effort and E X represents represent distance moved by effort. Now take note of this that uh, this L Y over E X is still the same thing as the L Y over sorry L times Y over E times X right. Now remember that this can be rewritten as L over E divided by okay X over Y. Yeah, because if two fractions are actually dividing each other, right? Now, the uh, right thing to do is to keep the first fraction, then change this sign, this division sign to multiplication, then you invert the second fraction. So, this expression here is actually equal to this expression here. Okay, but remember that the expression here represents a uh, velocity ratio, while the first fraction here represents mechanic advantage of force ratio so that efficiency of a machine can as well be equal to mechanic advantage all over velocity ratio because our x over y represents our velocity ratio from our definition we've seen that earlier okay so that efficiency of a machine is also equal to mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100 percent okay and it should be noted that efficiency of a machine decreases with increase in friction Okay, we all know that uh, friction affects mechanical advantage. Okay, and from this relationship, efficiency is directly proportional to mechanical advantage. So anything that is happening to mechanical advantage will definitely affect the efficiency. Okay, will definitely affect efficiency. That's why efficiency decreases with increase in friction because increase in friction will lead to decrease in mechanical advantage. Let's move to the next slide to continue with our lesson. Okay, so here we are going to be applying some of all those formula that we have seen or that we have derived in solving some simple problems. So let's begin with question A. What does it mean that the mechanical advantage, M A M for mechanical, A for advantage? So what does it mean that the mechanical advantage of a machine is for ratio 1? So what it means that the ratio of load to effort is for ratio 1. Okay, for example, if you are asked, what does it mean that the mechanical advantage of a machine is 4 ratio 1? So your answer should be that, okay, the mechanical advantage of a machine is 4 ratio 1 means that the ratio of load to effort is 4 ratio 1. So it's as simple as that. Okay, so let's answer the, um, the I, I part. What does it mean that the velocity ratio, V for velocity, R for ratio of a machine is 5? Okay, what it means that the distance moved by the effort is five times the distance moved by load. Okay, that's what this statement means. The velocity ratio of a machine is five. Means that the distance moved by effort is five times the distance moved by the load. Okay, so let us move to B. Okay, an electric water pump rated 1.5 kilowatts lifts 200 kg of water through a vertical height of 6 meter in 10 seconds. What is the efficiency of the pump? So let's move over to the board to solve this problem. Now remember, as usual, the first thing first is to write out the information that are given to you in the question. It will help you. Okay? But before we start, let's start with the formula of um, efficiency. Okay, so we know efficiency, I said this is the, a symbol for representing, or efficiency is denoted by this symbol. And this symbol is known as eta. Okay, so take note of that. So efficiency is equals to, in this case, we are going to be using work output, okay, all over work input to solve this problem, okay, times 100%, right? Now, from the question we know that the work input okay which is the uh the rate okay because the, according to the question an electrical water pump rated 1.5 okay so that is the input power so work input we already know is equals to 1.5 kilowatts so we change this kilowatts to to what by simply multiplying this by 1000 so if we multiply this by 1000 we're having 1000 500 right 1500 watts so i've gotten that now if you check very well we don't know the work output but we can get the work output by simply calculating power now remember that power is equals to 
work done over time, right? I remember that work done is equals to force times distance, right? Or you can as well to take it, maybe if the work is done uh, against gravity, then it becomes uh, then it becomes mg times h, right? So let's look at the information that is given to us there. So we are giving mass to be equal to 200 kg. We are giving height h to be equal to uh, 6 meter. We are giving time to be equal to uh, uh, 10 seconds. Now remember, we are going to be taking g, right, to be equal to 10 meter per second squared. So with this, we can substitute this into our formula to get the work output, okay? So this will be the work done by the machine, okay? So in this case, we'll be having mg times h all over t, right? So we are calculating for power, okay, which is work output. So in this case, we'll be having 200 times 10 times height, which is also, okay, which is 6, then divided by 10 right so 10 we cancel out 10 so that will be having 200 times 6 and that will be equals to 1200 watt right so now that we have gotten our work output then we can go back to our formula for for efficiency and substitute these values into the formula okay so now our work output equals to 1200 and our work input is equals to 1500 then times 100 over 1. So these zeros, we take out these, right? So 5 here will be 3. 5 here will be 20. 3 here will be 1. 3 here will be 4. So that at the end of the day, we'll be having 4 times 20. And this will be equal to 80%. So the efficiency of the pump is equal to 80%. So the answer to example B is equal to 80%. So let's solve C. A machine has a velocity ratio of 5 and is 80% efficiency. What effort would be needed to lift a load of 2000 Newton with the aid of this machine? So as usual, let's move over to the board to provide answer to this question. So if you look at the question carefully, you find out that we are giving velocity ratio, but we are not giving mechanical advantage. Okay, so and it is from our mechanical advantage that we can calculate for the effort okay, that will be needed to lift a load of 2000 Newton with the aid of this machine. So let's go efficiency. Okay, it is equals to, in this case, we are going to be using mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100%. Okay, but remember that mechanical advantage is equals to load over effort, right? And V dot R, which is our velocity ratio, is given to us to be equals to, to be equals to uh, five. Okay, to be equals to five, and uh, the efficiency is given to us to be equals to eighty percent, right? So we'll first of all, get um, solve for mechanical advantage from what we have here. Okay. So efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage all over velocity ratio times 100, okay, times 100%, right? So let's put in the values that are given to us. So we can easily do this by writing 80 over 100 because that's what 100% means, okay? 80 over 100 is equal to mechanical advantage all over velocity ratio. Now, there's no need to write this again, okay, since we actually use 80 over 100, right? But we can just write 80 here and still leave our 1000 here, uh, our 100 percent here. So you will still have the same answer. So you can do it anyhow you want to do it, but the most important thing is that you get the correct answer. Okay, so you can write 80 over 100 here, or you can just write 80 here, then fix in this value, then times 100 is still the same. So we cross multiply. This will give us 100 MA is equals to 80 times, of course, we know the value of our VR, which is 5. Right, so if we multiply this, this will be equal to 400, right? Now, since we are looking for MA, okay, so we divide both sides by the coefficient of MA, which is 100. So if we divide 400 by 100, that will give us 4, okay? So we already know that our mechanical advantage is equal to 4, okay? But we are asked to calculate the effort, 
Okay, so we return back to this formula. So M dot A is equals to load over effort. But according to the question, load is equals to 2000 Newton, right? And from our calculation, mechanical advantage is equals to four. So we just input those values into our formula. So that you'll be having four is equals to, the load is 2000, okay, over the effort, what we are looking for. Okay, so this is also over one, so that we can cross multiply. So that we'll be having 4e is equals to 2000, right? So we divide both sides in order to get the effort by the coefficient of e, which is 4. So e will now be equals to 2000 divided by 4. And this will be equals to 500 newton. Okay, so from our calculation, the effort that will be needed to lift a load of 2000 newton with the aid of this machine is equals to 500 newton. Okay, so let's move on to solve example D. A machine with a velocity ratio of 30 moves a load of 3000 newton when an effort of 200 newton is applied. Okay, the efficiency of the machine is so let's move over to the board to solve this question. So as usual, write out the parameters that are given to you in the question. So from the question, we know that velocity ratio is equals to 30, okay? And the load, L, is equals to 3,000 newton. And effort is equals to 200 newton, okay? And what information is given to us again, that's all. And we are asked to calculate efficiency, okay? So efficiency time is equals to, in this case, we are using mechanical advantage over velocity ratio okay times 100 percent since we are calculating for efficiency so mechanical advantage is not given to us but we can actually solve for mechanical advantage and that's why the load and the effort is given to us so remember that mechanical advantage is equals to load over effort okay and according to the question the value of our load is 3000 and effort is true so we can divide to get our answer. So this will be equal to 15, right? So our mechanical advantage is equal to 15. Now, somebody may ask, why is it that there's no, uh, there's no unit? Okay, the reason for that is because mechanical advantage is a ratio, okay? Mechanical advantage is a ratio. So a ratio does not have units. Okay, so our efficiency now will be equal to, now we already know the mechanical advantage to be equal to 15, okay? And we know our velocity ratio to be equal to 30 then times 100 of course 100 over 1 so 0 here is 1 right then um, 0 we take out 0 from here sorry 0 will cancel out 0 from here so that we have having 3 years so 3 here is 1 3 here is 5 so that at the end of the day we are now having 5 times 10 and that will be equal to 50 percent okay so let's move back to the screen so the efficiency of the machine is 50 percent so this is where we draw the curtain for the preview for today's video and i believe you enjoy the little part you have watched if you want to watch the complete video you can click on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website there you have to subscribe to enjoy the complete video and in the complete video we talked more about types of machine and the different uh, calculations and formulas that are associated with this machine is something that you will really love and you won't want to miss okay so i believe you enjoyed the little part you have watched if yes please do not forget to click on the like button hit on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next video